What are the biggest lessons that Bobby Dalback has learned so far in his career? He answers that in this episode of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to welcome you back into the Locked On Red Sox podcast. And thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I am your host, Jake Nizuski. And today, we have a very special guest. You may know him as the former Red Sox first baseman. And that was the current Woo Sox utility player, Bobby Dalbeck. We're going to go into my conversation with him a little bit later in the episode. But he's sort of going to be the subject for today. I wanted to bring back this series that we did last season called The Farm Report, where anytime I had an interview with one of the Red Sox minor leaguers, you know, I'd showcase that interview to help you guys get a little bit of more insight about not only, you know, their preparation, different things that they might be working on, but also focus more on the human being as well. That's the one thing that, you know, I love about these conversations is being able to shed light on who the minor leaguer, the person is, rather than just the player, and to help you get a little bit of insight on that aspect uh, of the certain Red Sox prospect or player in this aspect. But focusing on Bobby Delbeck here, he's somebody who obviously spent time with the Red Sox uh, in 2021 and 2022 on the Major League roster, was a huge prospect coming up through the system, but there was always sort of that shadow behind him, which is Tristan Cassis. And there was always that question When Dalbeck was coming up, and even when he was on the Red Sox getting consistent reps, when is Cassis going to come in? And, you know, could he potentially take Dalbeck's place? And I I think that was one thing that sort of was very evident last season, especially. But it was really nice to see, you know, Dalbeck really find a way to get into a groove during the end of the 2021 season. You know, a lot of people pointed to, you know, the Kyle Schwarber trade and Schwarber really being able to help Dalbeck with his plate presence. But one thing that, you know, and, you know, Bobby even mentions it in, in him and I's conversation is that he was a very one dimensional type of hitter. And you, you either saw him you know, hit a home run or strike out. He didn't say that specifically, but he sort of said the phrase of one dimensional hitter, but that's sort of exactly what he was. And he never was really able to develop into the productive, regularly uh, offensive player in the majors as you know most expected him to be you know coming up through the Red Sox system and especially with what he showed uh, early on uh you know in the spring training of 2021 and ultimately when he made his debut uh in 2020 and also in 2021 as well when he got majority of his first playing time on the major league roster I'll, I'll never forget especially you know when I think he hit like seven home runs in 2021 uh spring training I'll never forget Jared Carabas coming out here saying you know he's gonna hit 55 home runs and you know he, he he did exactly what a lot of rookies do when they first come up they struggle and you know especially being able to adapt to the major league pitching it's not always super easy especially for a guy like in Dahlbeck's case who struggles with striking out more a little bit than he gets on base and you know that's one thing that especially last season, which it was mainly a prove year for Dalback to show the Red Sox that, you know, he could be that productive regular player and that he, you know, had a little bit of some development or some progression towards that more productive player rather than falling back into what, you know, not only the front office, but most fans knew what he was, which was, you know, a player who, you know, he could either strike out, you know, majority of the upper bats, hit a home run, sometimes get on base, but the play presence wasn't exactly what you would want it to be. You know, sometimes he would chase out of nowhere, which you expect that from a rookie, but after somebody's, you know, been in the league for, you know, a good amount of time or, or had a certain amount of upper bats, you sort of got to, uh, especially with, you know, Cassis right behind him, it sort of got to a point where, you know, Dalbeck either needed to show you immediately that he was a future uh, first baseman or he had a future on the Red Sox or not. And so it, it was interesting all throughout the offseason, uh, you know, the question marks on if he would be traded or not. I remember when I was at the winter meetings, there was a lot of rumblings. I remember the Marlins uh, were interested. The Rays were a team that were brought up, but nothing ever really materialized. And, you know, him and Duran were the two players that were pretty much the big question marks during spring training, you know, are they going to start the season in Worcester? You know, 
Will they be traded? And, you know, it, it was sort of uh, something that people didn't want to like answer. It was, it was, you, you didn't really know how everything was going to ultimately play out with, you know, the roster spots, but it was sort of already uh, made up in people's minds, uh, whether it's in the media or in the front office, that, you know, they would probably start in AAA and, you know, they would have to prove that they deserve a spot up on the major league roster, especially with how, you know, Cassis all the buzz that he has around his name, you know, coming up through the system last year as a prospect. And also, you know, the flashes of um, him, him being productive at the plate and on the field, uh, you know, that he was able to show you last season during September. But I, I think we, what Dahlbeck has been able to do in AAA thus far uh, is exactly what, you know, you would like to see from him. You know, when you look at the numbers, just plainly the batting average, you know, it's not what you like to see, but especially with the small sample size of only three games, you know, you're, you're not really going to be able to see an actual uh, number that gives you a full explanation of how the player is doing. You know, he, he's batting 111, but he's two for nine right now uh, over three games. Uh, and he's shown a lot better play presence. And, and that also shows in the numbers, too. He, he's drawn four walks compared to four strikeouts. So that's definitely a plus. You know, it's always nice uh, when, when it's a very, very uh, similar number in terms of walks and strikeouts, especially with what it's been with Dalbeck in the past. And one other aspect outside of, you know, the different positions that he's played throughout spring training and that he's being asked to play uh, in Worcester is that he's also changed sort of his appearance too. He, he's wearing glasses. And one thing that, you know, he spoke uh, with Katie Morrison uh, sort of about how he got his eyes checked at the end of last season. And, he said that, you know, he needed a new prescription. He either needed contacts and he said that he doesn't like to wear contacts or he wanted to wear glasses. And so you you can sort of think about maybe that could have correlated to, you know, him striking out a little bit more and maybe not having as great of an eye for where the strike zone was, especially when your eyesight isn't really helping you out too well. So I'm very curious to see with those eyeglasses, how that will really help him at the plate, you know, as any Red Sox fan, I bet can tell you, other than if you have like a personal vendetta against him, with with, with Dalbeck, you you just want to see the guy succeed. You know, you never want to see a, a prospect or or somebody in Dalbeck's case who you know was a prospect had his opportunity and it didn't work out for him. So, uh, you know, I, I I'm really hoping that he's able to you know be able to build up his value a little bit down in AAA. You know, whether he ends up helping out the Red Sox at some point this season, or you know he ends up helping out another team ultimately that will be seen now over those three games i brought up the the different positions that the red sox have been asking him to play you know obviously that was a big conversation throughout spring training you know we were going to see him more in his less conventional type type of uh positions that we've seen of him th thus far you know first base and third base are are his main ones that he's played throughout his time in the red sox farm system uh, but, you know, now they're adding shortstop in second base. And uh, this is something that, you know, I'm very curious to see how he continues to progress in those certain positions. But uh, he's played one game at third base, first base and shortstop thus far uh, in his Woo Sox short career uh, throughout this season. Uh, and and actually our conversation, he speaks about what position between shortstop and second base he feels most comfortable with. And also he speaks more about, as I already mentioned, what goes into his mental game uh, and the lessons he's really learned throughout his time in professional baseball. But before we get into him and I's conversation, I just want to take a second to talk to you about so rare. So our new sponsor is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 major league teams. It's unlike any other fantasy baseball platform. So rare managers truly own their fantasy experience by collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards and there's no cost to play whatsoever. Plus, the more you the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and assessing next level competitions and rewards as well. So another thing that, you know, when I saw this, they, this made me want to play it much, much more is that they recently partnered with Major League All-Stars Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez to serve as brand ambassadors. And they're both being featured on So Rare's current branding campaigns. And they'll engage with the community throughout the season at MLB events. So if you want to go and check out So Rare, head over to SoRare.com slash locked on. There's so it's spelled 
S O R A R E dot com to draft your team for free player cards, set up your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's so rare.com slash locked on to start playing today. Now, let's get into my conversation with Bobby Dalbeck. So I see you got the best buddy shirt on, and, and especially with, with the Woo Sox, with Worcester, they do a lot in the community. I'm yeah. curious for you, how important is that community aspect? Um, it's huge, um, you know, especially from a fan base standpoint. Um, the more that the team and the fans can connect, the you know, you feel like you're, you feel like it's a hundred versus nine, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, for you, like. You've been you've been in professional baseball for a few years now. And I'm always interested to hear what lessons guys take from you know their different experiences. And so for you, what advice would you give to your younger self first getting drafted into professional baseball? Um, you know, I'd say um, you know be nicer, be nicer to myself. That's that's uh, that's a huge thing. Um, I've always been very hard on myself, and I think that's part of what makes me good. But um, it can keep me from reaching my full potential as well. I think that's tough, just in any human aspect, Absolutely. just beating ourselves up. And you know for you what really goes into your mental routine preparing for the game and also afterwards as well um you know i think writing in a notebook for me is huge um you know if i, I can think things all the time i'm a very creative creative brain so things come and go um, mm-hmm. pretty quick and when i write things down um that are good and i can go back to it um, you know it's huge for me just to reinforce what you know what i'm doing at the field or what i'm doing at the plate defense life um, where my mind is at right now why am i feeling certain ways i think just taking charge and ownership of that stuff uh, can you know, help success greatly. Do you do positive affirmations at all? Like, I am strong, I am powerful, or anything like that? Or what sort of things do you try and write down? I wouldn't say I would do it so, like, uh, by the book, you know? Uh-huh. But I just kind of jot things down and then, um, you know, reinforce them, you know, double underlines, stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know? And then, you know, throughout spring training, we saw that you played in multiple different positions. And outside of first and third, what, what would you say is your most comfortable position between sec- second and shortstop? Uh, definitely shortstop. Um, you know, I feel comfortable at both, but shortstop for sure. Just on the left side. I played my whole life on the left side so, so, up until first base last few years. So, so, yeah. And then last thing for you, is, is there anything that you worked on during the off season? that you've already noticed starting to play out and, and, and help you improve during this season? Yeah, you know, just finding uh, you know, the big part of the field again. Uh, you know, the last couple of years have been more of a one-dimensional hitter. And, uh, you know, now I feel like uh, I spent this whole offseason trying to raise my floor. And I feel like this spring show because, you know, I wasn't really, you know, didn't feel super great body-wise, swing-wise. After the first like week and a half or so, and uh, you know, still getting on base and scoring runs and helping the team win, so um, you know, I think that shows what the floor. You know, I'm starting to raise my floor a little bit. But we'll see uh, as the season goes. That makes sense. Really appreciate you taking yeah, time, man. Thank, thank you. you. I hope that you did enjoy my conversation with Bobby Dalback and got to learn a little bit more about not only him as the human being, but also him as the player as well. But if you want to start to bet more on the Boston Red Sox and have some ideas or feel confident that, you know, maybe they'll win their next game against the Tigers or, you know, maybe they'll win the World Series or make the playoffs. FanDuel is the number one place to do that. And also, if you're interested in the NBA, the playoffs are coming up and almost here. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app it's safe secure and super easy to use then you can bet on everything from money line to point scores to threes drained and also with the Red Sox you can also do player props you can do home runs you know somebody gets a hit you know Chris Sale you know over under five strikeouts all that sort of stuff and especially if you feel confident in something might as well as go and bet on it especially with FanDuel plus they even allow you to combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to, to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with Fanduel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. And we want to thank you so much for tuning into this episode. If you did enjoy this farm report, we have so many more uh, in in the bucket of content. You know, we got Jorge Alforo, Jaron Duran. I, I'm, I'm going to stop naming names, but we got some exciting ones. Uh, and I do also want to apologize as well if, you know, the audio wasn't the best. That was during Woo Sox Media Day. There was probably like 20 other media members uh, in the clubhouse there. So they were all talking at the same time. Tried my best to make the audio as best as possible, but I hope that you still did 
still did enjoy the interview and got to learn a little bit more, as I said, about Bobby Duck the person rather than just him as a player. But we're going to continue to bring you great content just like this throughout the season and also be able to bring on multiple different interviews like this and also, you know, fun conversations uh, with different players and, and, you know, media personalities. And also I want to get more fans on as well. So uh, if you have not yet, make sure to subscribe over on YouTube or whatever audio platform that you're listening to right now. And we also want to thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Now make your second listen and check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy strategies. Find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and over on YouTube. I don't know about you. I'm trying to win my league. This is this has been a tough week for me thus far, but I'm ready for the waiver wire. I'm ready to you know grab all these free agents that I need to in order to win next week. So I've been listening to Matt and Dom. They do some great information over there. And also make sure to check out the other Locked On podcast that, that there is all throughout the network. If you want to start to you know prepare for more for the Tigers series, the two games that they have left, Locked On Tigers does a great job. You know, if you want to stay tuned into what's happening with the AL East, you know, there's Locked On Orioles, Locked On Blue Jays, etc. Locked On Podcast Network does an amazing job of keeping fans updated each and every single day. But as always, we greatly appreciate you tuning in. And also, if you want to stay up to date with everything that we're doing on this podcast, who we're having on, what we're talking about. One thing that we really try to do is get you, the listener, involved in each and every single episode. So, you know, when we have an idea for, uh, you know, uh, an episode or, you know, we're, we're talking about after the game, one thing that we like to do is, you know, tweet on our Twitter and get your thoughts and incorporate that into the episode. We want to do everything that we can to make this the most fan engaging Red Sox podcast that there is out there. So make sure to follow us over there. It's LO underscore Red Sox. Also follow myself. It's at Jake Iggy and also Lauren. It's La La La. Three Laws. Lauren with four R's. But as always, we hope everybody has a great rest of their day and we'll end it how we always end it. Keep the faith and let's go, Sox. Peace.